Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. And um, numero dos. Yeah. <laughs> we had the Latin. We had the Latin yogurt, so we're. <laughs> it was really good. So. so, so I'm speaking Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, amigo. Hola, hola. <laughs> hola. Yeah. I remember I was on a show, I think it was the Gorgeous George show, where they said that, that, that English was, was were running out of, uh, uh, people weren't speaking English anymore, they were speaking Spanish. Yeah. So I began the whole, like, five minutes speaking in Spanish. And I speak Spanish, you know, yeah. at a college, at a high school level. Yeah. Never had to. But I, I wrote a lot of it down and started speaking Spanish. Yeah. Do you speak any other languages? Um, I speak a little French, but French? not much. Oh, yeah. bonjour. Bonjour. Bon... Comment allez-vous? Yeah. Ah, merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, see, I speak French too. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, when you go to a different country, we're talking about going to different countries. When you go to a different country, it's good to know some of the language. So they don't think of you just as a ugly American. Yeah. <laughs> they think of you as a pretty American. Because <laughs> there they, they know English and, and whatever language they have to learn. Um, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of speaking, you know what scares me on Halloween? And we're going to do this soon, is uh, acting in a play. Yeah. And, and what scares me... The rehearsals don't scare me. Yeah. But then comes a day when you have to know all your lines and you have to get on stage. Oh, yes. And sometimes the worst nightmares I have, and you probably have these, all, all actors have these nightmares. Yeah. You, it, it's the equivalent of going on, uh, going to a class that you didn't study for the test and then, oh, the test, a, yes. <laughs> a pop quiz, and you don't know and you don't know anything the teacher's going to ask you. Yes. And, and being an actor, you always... Miss, you're always worried about uh, uh, your lines and, and getting them wrong. And some act, uh, you know, if you're doing Shakespeare or you're doing something, you know, that people know the lines yeah. for. I've been in a few, you know, usually plays. Let's face it, once you're on stage, it's all up to you. You either know your lines or you don't. Yeah. But, um, and so you might be able to ad lib your way out of something. But, but Shakespeare and uh, certain, and certain like Neil Simon, where all these jokes fall into place. Yeah. You almost always have to, because <laughs> there are people in the audience following. You miss that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be a <or> what? <laughs> <laughs> to be. That is the what? <laughs> 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 Get off the stage, you yeah. poser. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm afraid, uh, and uh, I'm going to be in a new play, The Christmas Carol. I'll it's, be in that too. Yes, so. and what? It, and you've been to rehearsals. Tell me how the rehearsals are going. They're going pretty well. I already, I only have one line in it. So. You only have one line. Yeah. So. You say, you say, Scrooge, bah humbug. I'd be Christmas. Like, I'd be like, yes, this will help very much. Merry okay. Merry Christmas, sir, and have a good day. Oh well, that's a good line. Yeah. My lines are, um, I play Marley. Yeah. And and the famous line I have, it's not I, I I'm not saying it verbatim. It's in the script. It's a little different, but but it's basically he goes, you you feel sorry for me with my this chain because this chain is so long. <laughs> there you've been, I've been dead for seven years. You have a seven year head start. <laughs> They're making your chain even longer. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and I think we're going to make the chain even heavier so it looks like I'm really struggling as Marley's ghost. Yeah. Because um, a chain in itself is not all that heavy. I yeah. mean, you could probably handle it all right. Yeah. But uh, but uh, we're, I think they're going to put a, like a bowling ball on it, like a ball and chain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and make it really look like I'm struggling, yeah. like Sisyphus. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's my scene as Marley. I'm yeah. only in the one scene. Um, I'm hoping they'll give me another part of it. Yeah. Uh, smaller part. But anyway, um, um, what was I going to say about, uh, they're okay. I'm going to talk religion a bit. In Ireland, there's this famous guy that they write all these, uh, books about and they write, uh, he was this great religious man. Yeah. And his name was Matt Talbot. I think he lived in the late 19th century and he would 
because it was cold there, he would always wear these heavy coats and heavy everything, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it was cold there, and people didn't really pay too much attention to him, but he did a lot of nice things for people and yeah. all this stuff. And listen to this. This is where it gets weird. When he died, I think this is a true story, too. When he died, and they uh, he was like a pauper, he was homeless or something. I don't know what was going on. Yeah. And they... Uh, uh, the coroner took off his clothes and they found out that he had a like a hundred pound chain wrapped around him that wow. he dragged as part of his penance for being a sinner or something so that's why the religious community thinks he's a great man I think he's a fool <laughs> <laughs> who the hell wants to walk around with a hundred pound <laughs> weight around him just to show uh, that you're better than everyone <laughs> I want to be as light as possible <laughs> I'm a, I'm a good guy. My friends like me. Yeah. My parents like me. Yeah. My dogs and cats like me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's but I but the main the main thing I wear as Marley is a chain. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what, what's going on now. Now, um, let's see. There is um, let's see. There's a lot going on in show business. Tell me what have you uh, heard about show business lately? I know I'm in the Christmas Carol. Yeah. And I might be um, auditioning for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Ah, yes. There's a new Willy Wonka movie coming out. Oh, it before is? he was famous, yeah. Oh. I mean, before Willy Wonka, you know, became an adult, he oh. was like a young guy creating his... You know, you only see in the story, Willy Wonka, he's already there as a as a entrepreneur. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made a Willy Wonka joke the other day. Yeah. Um, it was on the cruise ship. They remember we did the karaoke, and they had a hard time getting it started. Oh yeah! It's supposed to start at seven, and it didn't. La it was like eight fifteen before the first person got up because they yeah. said, "Let's try it again. Let's try it again." And here's all these people just waiting around. Another, another vodka stinger. <laughs> another gin ricky. <laughs> That's what people do on cruise ships. So we're waiting around, and then finally they got it on, and then I was the first one to sing <laughs> on this on this untested uh, thing. So I said. Uh, I said, uh, I'm glad I'm finally up here. I said, uh, the sing, uh, I said, who runs your IT department? Willy Wonka? <laughs> Everything falling apart? <laughs> if I start singing, I hope not to turn into a giant blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so Willy Wonka always is, is my man when it comes to things breaking down. <laughs> yeah. And I love Willy Wonka in the sense that, uh, um, he, he almost like, he has almost an omnipotent sort of uh, characterization in, in the movies and everything, yeah. where he kind of knows what's going on, even though it all looks like everything's falling apart. Like, if you notice, like, there's like five kids or something yeah. on uh, that get the golden tickets, and they, and they all, except for Will, uh, uh, except for Charlie, they all uh, reach a bad end. Yeah. And Willy Wonka's not all that surprised. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let's go on to the next. <laughs> okay. The Oompa Loompas will take care of him. Okay. <laughs> take care yeah. of Augustus Gloop. <laughs> yeah. And Violet Beauregard and all the others. Mike yeah. TV. Veruca Salt. Veruca Salt, yeah. She's actually my favorite. Veruca Salt is your favorite? Who, which one is she? She's the spoiled brat. They're all spoiled brats, except for Charlie. Yeah. What she, does she do? She, Remind uh, us. I want it now. And what is she? What is, she wants an Oompa Loompa. She goes down the drain. Yeah. She's the one who goes down the drain. Yeah, okay. Yes. I, I know Violet turns into a blueberry, blueberry. and Agaza Gloop yes. goes into a chocolate thing. And then uh, Mike TV gets shrunk, shrunken down into, yeah. <laughs> into a, a TV screen yeah. the size person. And then, of course, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, by the way, on this cruise ship, uh, we had elevators, but it, the elevators were, you know, you waited for them. And, uh, and, you know, I said, listen, let's just go up one, one floor yeah. or down one floor. That's all we, we don't have to wait for this to go on, but the length of the ship was very long. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Willy Wonka, I wish the elevator, instead of going up and down, went <laughs> left and right, yeah. <laughs> like the glass elevator in the, you <laughs> know, in the, in the, in the, in the yeah. chocolate factory. But anyway, uh, so. Uh, tell us about uh, music you've been listening to. You have some C um, some uh, LPs. Okay. This is uh, this is uh, Mary Elizabeth's record collection. Yes. LP collection. What's the first one? I've been listening to Neil Sedaka. Neil Sedaka. Oh yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Still with us. Yeah. Yes, he's really good. Yeah. Neil Sedaka. That's what he looks like. Yes, he did a lot of hits. 
No. What are your favorite songs on Neil? Breaking a heart, breaking up is hard, dude. Yeah. There's a song called Bad Blood. Oh yeah, Bad Blood uh, with Elton John. Yeah, Bad yeah. Blood. The fish is in the way. I think that's the first song I bought of his. I really like that song. He had yeah. another song called on the same album. It was called uh, Laughter in the Rain. Yeah. It turned out. Let me tell you something about. I could tell you a whole bunch about Neil Sedaka. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll hold Neil Sadako up. And you, yeah. We want. We don't want to hide your pretty face here. Yeah. Uh, Neil Sadako uh, was from New York. I think he's from Queens. Yeah. And yeah. he um, he was like a child prodigy, playing the piano as a kid. Yeah. Uh, played at his uh, synagogues. Yeah. And uh, he's a uh, the name is uh, Sephardic. He's uh, like Spanish uh, Jew, and he um, he was devoted to his mother. He, his mother did a lot for him to become popular, and he became popular very young, like um, as a songwriter. He wrote all these songs, like uh, "Where the Boys Are," yeah. and he uh, he wrote songs for other people. And then, and then eventually, uh, he was told that he was such a good uh, when he would like perform them at the Brill Building, uh, Tin Pan Alley in New York. Uh, they told him, you know, you're a pretty good singer. Why don't you, uh, why don't you sing your own song? So he started singing songs like "Stupid Cupid," yeah, and um, "A Calendar Girl," yeah, and they're all good songs. "Breaking Up Is Hard to Do" is probably yeah. the best song he came up with in those days. Okay, and then you, and then I think he was in Las Vegas. He didn't perform for. I mean, you didn't hear from him. You know, like a lot of singers, he had that 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 peak in the '50s, and then you didn't hear from yeah. him so much anymore. Oh, by the way, he wrote with a guy called Howard Greenfield. Yeah. And as it turned out, Howard Greenfield, I think, died in the 1990s, and they were still writing songs together. And if you did from the 1950s to the 1990s, he, they were writing together for 40 years. This was the longest collaboration of, of uh, maybe even longer than that, of, um, of songwriters ever. Lennon McCartney didn't write for 40 years. Um, yeah. uh, the Gershwin brothers didn't write for Roger <laughs> Hammerstein. They yeah. didn't, all these... Uh, uh, teams and he wrote all these songs with Howard Greenfield um, Neil Sadaka fine pianist he still performs in uh, in you know in Atlantic City places like that um, okay he had a comeback he had written a few songs that for other people that were became very popular one was a song called Solitaire oh, yeah. uh, by the Carpenters I think yeah. and then he had a song called uh, mm -hmm. Love Will Keep Us Together by uh, Captain, Captain of Tennille. And that kind of... But then I think when Elton John was looking for songs or something, he actually contacted them and found out that he hadn't really worked in the in the mainstream in a long time. So he actually signed them to his record album, yeah. a record label called Rocket Records. He was like the first major yeah. performer. And people didn't even know who Neil Sadaka was at that time. They forgot, who, Neil who? Is he still alive? You know, uh -huh. that type of thing. This is back in the 90, late 1970s. Yeah. And then he... He became a hit again. Probably <laughs> bigger than he was in the 50s. He had songs like Bad Blood. Yeah. And That's Where the Music Takes Me. And uh, and a lot of those songs that I mentioned, he actually did record and they became hits again. Yeah. He, had a, he actually even came up with a, a new version of Breaking Up is Hard to Do, which was a, um, a slow version, like a ballad version, you know. Breaking yeah. Up. Is hard to do. You know, not the bang do de do no, yeah, no. Not yeah. that fast version. Yeah. But I think and, and now when you hear him sing, he, I think he sings the fast version. <laughs> but Neil Sadaka is, is really is a really good singer. He yeah. he was actually he was one of those guys that became so popular in the seventies and eighties that that a lot of people who used to like him said, "Well, he's too popular now. I don't like him anymore." <laughs> I liked him when he was poor and desperate. <laughs> yeah. But he he um he he's he's really something. Now this album is very interesting. It was live in Australia. It's live in Australia, and this is a concert album. And other than a, um, other than a uh, medley, this only lasts like what, six minutes long. He sings uh, "Happy Birthday, Sweet 16 and yeah, and, uh, that song. and "Little Devil" and "O oh, Carol" and other songs. Yeah. All the other songs on here are from other people. He's singing his own versions of like, uh, what is he have? "Bye Bye Blackbird" and um, yeah. Those were the days, my friend, and shake, rattle, and roll. Yeah. And 
He sugar sugar everything is beautiful. He's a bridge over trouble. He even sings Danny Boy on this album. So it's a very interesting oh, album Danny because Boy. you don't he he he's actually showing how good an entertainer and singer he is. Yeah. It's a very high voice. First time I I'm not kidding. First time I heard it was a woman singing because <laughs> no days I expected all men to sing like Johnny yeah. Cash and. When a man has a high, like, falsetto voice. Just like, like Rod Stewart. Like Rod instance. Stewart. My grandfather thought he sounded like a girl. <laughs> yes. Well, there, I, I remember there were these singers around. They call them falsettos, which are yeah. male versions of, like, uh, I guess, yeah. sopranos. Yeah. And, they, and, they, and there was, I think, um, uh, 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 Aaron Neville. Yeah. And Tiny Tim. And maybe Neil Sadaka. And when you heard them, you said, is there a, is there a, <laughs> is there a deep voice in this, this whole group? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they, sing, yeah. they sing like, uh, like yodelers, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, this looks like a very good album, and this was a very good choice. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, tell me about the other album you have there. Uh, have you heard of this show called The Electric Company? That's right. Oh, yeah. It's the teenage version of Sesame Street. Yes. It had Morgan Freeman, Rita Moreno... All them. Yes. Now these are songs or like comedy they're, they're bits. Songs. They're they're songs. songs. Yes. Yeah. So. I remember Letterman. Letterman. <laughs> and I remember. I remember a lot of funny stuff on the Electric Company. Electric Company was kind of a um, was kind of a um, uh, a a, a um, iconoclastic sort of like. Um, uh, Super duper sort of uh, uh, controversial version of the yeah. <laughs> of the uh, 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 of the uh, of Sesame Street. I yeah. think it was probably by the same people. The, these uh, this was a show that brought you out of Sesame Street and into maybe teenage stuff. They didn't work so much on on uh, on letters and sounds and numbers. Yeah. They they worked more only on like. Yeah. Uh, diphthongs and yeah. <laughs> similes. Yeah. <laughs> Things that a teenager would know. Yeah. If you know your phonics. And uh, uh, Morgan Freeman was on there. And if you see him today, I mean, if you see the reruns of it, it's kind of funny to see Morgan Freeman because you think of Mar Morgan Freeman as this old man who talks very slow and very. <laughs> and here he's actually kind of, you know, kind of more, more with it. Yeah. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Um, uh, the big, the big star attraction. You're, you're going to hate this. The big star attraction of this show when it first came out was Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it first came out, and people were watching it because you know Bill Cosby was a big deal. This is before the Cosby Show and before all the other scandals. And uh, and Bill Cosby was actually pretty good on the show. And then um, and then uh, uh, Rita Moreno was on there. Oh yeah. Now I met Rita Moreno, and um, and I said um, I said, well, we know you got an Emmy. And we know you got a Grammy. No, we know you got an Oscar for West Side Story. Yeah. We know you got a Tony. I think it was for West Side Story. Yeah. Where did you get the Grammy? And she goes, oh, for the uh, album version of The Electric Company. So I have a feeling she probably won it either for this album or a similar album yeah. for, the, uh, for her work on The Electric Company. Yeah. Rita Moreno. So, that's, uh, so she's one of those people. They call it an EGOT where you get an Emmy, Grammy, uh, Tony, and Oscar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I think Mel Brooks has actually put that even further. He got the uh, AFI Award and yeah. the Kennedy Center and the um, Mark Twain Award. That's what happens when you live to be 97. Yeah. <laughs> if you live long, listen, and I'm not a big deal. I don't make a big deal about awards and stuff. I joke about when I don't win them. Uh, but when I do win them, you know, it's nice to win them. But the, I don't do things for the awards. But um, but when you do things, when you if you live long enough, and outlast your competition, they start giving you awards. Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't even like getting awards. I think Burt Reynolds said, if I ever won, a, won an Oscar, that would be the end of my career because that would be almost like, uh, well, what's next to do? <laughs> I've been working 50 years. Some people, you know, make get an Oscar their first or second movie. Yeah. And, then, and there's nowhere else to go from yeah. there. Uh, Angelina Jolie is the, the yeah. best example of that. But, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, all she could do after that was marry Brad Pitt <laughs> and Billy Bob, and uh, so so the Electric Company. Oh, the Electric Company is very uh, very good show. Yeah. And um, did Maybe. you watch uh, all those PBS shows? I watched Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, Three Two One Contact. Yeah. Um, I think the Electric Company a little bit, and um, 
read some other ones. Do you watch uh, The Big Blue Marble? I haven't heard of that Do you watch Blue's one. Clues? No. <laughs> Do you watch much. The Big Red Dog Clifford? What, what was the I one? I had the books of that. Yeah. How about uh, uh, the one with the kid, um, the bald-headed kid? What was his name? Um, Doug. Doug. Yeah. <laughs> I watched them a little bit here yeah. and there. Yeah, I, 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 uh, my sister. I have a sister almost my age, and and I said, to her, "What are you watching?" She says, "Barney the dinosaur." <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, "Did you like it?" She goes, "No, I found it very childish." <laughs> I said, "It's well, a show duh. for children." <laughs> duh, duh, duh. It's not a show. It's not a, <laughs> duh. It's not a show for for people who read the New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> they don't set. They don't have four dollar transcripts of the McNeil Lair report for, for, for that show. Anyway, uh, 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 Amalo, Carilou, Carilou was his name. Yeah. And that was a show that my nephew used to watch, and I couldn't understand why anyone would watch that show. <laughs> I mean, when I watched cartoons as a kid, they usually had a lot of um, verve and panache. Yeah. Bugs Bunny, Woody yeah. Woodpecker. You know, I used were, to watch them too. Oh, I mean, they, those were great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those were so uh, uh, irreverent. That's the word I was trying to find yeah. earlier. And uh, this was like an irreverent version of, uh, of Sesame Street. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the Electric Company was great. The Electric Company, I remember watching it once, and I think it was Morgan Freeman was hosting a game show, oh, and he yeah. said, and he said, and, and and as a grand prize, you won dinner for two at your uncle's house. <laughs> <laughs> and I always remember that joke. That was funny. <laughs> and um, uh, so, yeah, uh, Mr. Rod, you like Mr. Rogers? Yeah. Well, hello, hello, Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> Would you be my neighbor? <laughs> Would you? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Every time I you go in those days, yeah, uh, you went to like a high school variety show, yeah, uh, you know that they always put on at the end of the year yeah. for the for the classmates and maybe their parents, they and the teachers. There was always a, a spoof, like a Saturday Night Live type spoof of Mister Rogers' neighbor, Mr. and Rogers. it was and it was always you know it was always like nothing nothing like like Mister Rogers was it's drunk. Mister Robinson's neighborhood, or Mister. Well, that was on Saturday Night Live, but I'm talking about just in. I mean, I'm talking to every high school variety show had their own Mister Rogers skit. Uh. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, let's let's go to the prison today. <laughs> Let's let's talk to this murderer. <laughs> and it, what, whatever situation that uh, Mr. Rogers would not be in, that's what we would do. <laughs> By the way, there's there's a movie. It's actually a pretty good movie about Mr. Rogers with Tom Hanks playing. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah. It's called "Won't You Be My Neighbor" or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's something. Yeah. I forget what it's called. But anyway, I think that's the second one was right. And what happened was, I saw the trailer. No, I saw a trailer on television on, on like on the, um, I think it might have been on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And coming next week, uh, you know, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and they showed Tom Hanks. It's a beautiful day, and and I thought it was a spoof of the. <laughs> I thought it was a Saturday Night Live spoof. I didn't know it was a real movie. <laughs> yeah, Tom Hanks, you know, because he still yeah. looked like Tom Hanks. He didn't look like Mr. Wright. He had his hair cut and his yeah. sweaters and everything. Yeah. He took his shoes off and. Yeah. What was the deal on taking his shoes off before he left there? I know. Is he like, uh, uh, does he have a uh, obsessive compulsive disorder? Yeah. <laughs> does he also wash his hands about five times before he leaves the house, turns the light on? About, yeah. I should make fun of that. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who do that. <laughs> I think all kids do that. Yeah. Kids, we love turning the TV set on and off. We like turning the lights on and off. Yeah. The worst thing I used to do as a kid that was sort of like that, sort of like, OCD habit was I wouldn't step on a crack when I was walking on a sidewalk. Yeah. But now I do. <laughs> there are people who don't outgrow stuff like that. <laughs> it's fine when you're like up until maybe you're 12 years old. If you're still if you're still doing stuff like that, uh, you know, uh, as you get older, that's a, that's that it goes like that. Yeah. Anyway, I have I have I brought a little I brought my own little thing here. Let's see. I brought a. 
I actually seen this guy in person, uh, Michael Feinstein. You know anything about Michael Feinstein? I've heard about him. Yeah, he's a very good singer. He has a very wonderful voice. He's a great pianist. And uh, I don't think he ever really thought he would become this great performer. And he is a great performer. He knows everything about Broadway songs and old-time music and uh, songs written all over the 20th century. Not rock and roll songs, but, but like show tunes. Yeah. Songs by Gershwin and uh, Irving Berlin and people like that. Yeah. And uh, he's from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. And he actually even hosted a show where he uh, was talking about, uh, he would take a song or a bunch of songs and he would actually dissect them. And he actually, t he was friends with everyone in, in, on Broadway that wrote music and stuff. He actually, and this is where it all started, was uh, Irving Berlin, not yeah. Irving Berlin. I don't even know if he ever met Irving. Irving Berlin lived to be almost lived to be 101 years old, and uh, but uh, Ira Ger that's who I meant. Ira Gershwin. Now, if you know about the Gershwins, uh, George died in like 1937 of a brain tumor at a very young age, and but his older, it might have been his older brother, uh, survived. Yeah. Uh, did not get sick. He was the lyricist, and Ira continued to write songs with other people after George died. He wrote, um, yeah. most famous song he wrote was The Man That Got Away with, I don't know if he wrote, he wrote it, but, but he wrote that uh, for, you know, almost he, all the lyrics for the A Star Is Born with Judy Garland, all the songs in there, The Man That Got Away is the most wow. famous song. Yeah. Great song. And Ira wrote. So anyway, Ira evidently had everything George ever written, not just his hits, but everything sheet music notebooks and everything and he hired this guy this i think he was only in his early 20s to catalog it all wow. and luckily this guy knew a lot about music and how to play the piano and everything and he started singing lyrics that weren't that were you know different lyrics right. for songs and stuff and then he started recording albums and making appearances and i think he actually has had for a long time the carlisle hotel in new york he was the uh, pianist, like the, the yeah. piano bar guy, and people would go there and see him and just hear him sing. He came to Richmond, and I, I didn't meet him, but I did see him perform. It was a wonderful show, him singing all these old songs uh, by, um, by Fred Astaire and, oh, okay. and, and uh, Dick Hames and uh, Frank Sinatra and, and you know, all those old-time uh, all those old time performers, uh, Judy Garland. Yeah. And so that's uh, um, this is an album, Michael... Feinstein, the MGM years, and and these are MGM. Of course, was not based in New York; it was based in California in Hollywood. And a lot of these guys went to um, went to uh, songwriters, uh, including the Gershwins, went to California yeah. for a short time to write songs for movies. And they're they're just as good as their Broadway songs. Yeah. So, so that's Michael Feinstein. If you see anything by Michael Feinstein, you know he's going to get quality. Uh, he sings probably every song that's ever been written. Up until 1950, he's probably recorded yeah. <laughs> that you've heard of a lot of Gershwin songs. He has like about five Gershwin albums, yeah. Um, and I'm sure a couple of Gershwin songs are on here too. Yeah. But um, uh, Michael Feinstein never never yeah. miss anything by Michael Feinstein. Yeah. So what's the rest of your day look like? It's Halloween. You're gonna hand out candy for the kids? Yes. Children? Yeah. So am I. Yeah, I'm gonna wear my costume. I think, oh, me too. Yeah, I think I think uh, me too. I think kids like it when adults wear costumes. I know, I know. Yeah, they think we're still kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I it was a delightful conversation uh, with you as always, Mary. You're 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 one of the finest people I know, and one of the nicest people I know, and one of and certainly one of the best conversationalists I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, take it away, Mary. Happy Halloween. I just want to say happy Halloween, and thank you all for tuning in, and God bless you all. Take care. Thanksgiving on its way. Yep, yep. Get out the turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Get out the mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> <laughs>